It's the Man Cave Club. So you did something a little oh, uh, man. nefarious we'll, to your we'll, role club. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll get into that. Let me give a little, <laughs> a little uh, backstory context. So, you know, these boots in their prior form were, they've been on this channel before in our engineer video. Kind of from day one, they were always a little short on me. And I sent them back to Brian. He stretched them. We talked about relasting. I was just really eager to, to get them. Mm -hmm. And so I went with the stretch because it was only a few day turnaround. He shipped them back. And, uh, and I wore them for a while. I put, I mean, I wore those leather soles down pretty good. And then, I don't know, for whatever reason, I just got more accustomed to a little bit roomier fit mm -hmm. and the more i got accustomed to that roomier fit when i started really wearing Bybergs, um they just felt smaller and smaller and smaller right and i just shelved them yeah and it's just way too nice way too expensive of a boot to shelf right they weren't in good enough shape to really get enough of my money back by selling them used mm-hmm so I was like, well, shoot, I'm stuck with them. I don't want to lose a ton of money selling them used. What do I do? Do I just stare at them for the rest of my life? Or do I, <laughs> right. you know, invest even more money into them right. and, uh, and maybe make them what I'm looking for more? So yeah, enter Unsung House. And uh, those guys have just been, been crushing it for, for years now in Nashville. Um, it's a uh, you know two brothers they do bespoke boots like from scratch mm -hmm. they have an engineer they got service boots and um, they're coming out with some kind of western boots right now um and they're cobblers too so they can do whatever from a simple resole to yeah. what i did well if you could build a boot i would assume you can do it yeah for you sure you can do any sort of repairs right? absolutely so to run down what I did, I needed these to be quite a bit bigger. So the way that process works with them is you take full full tracings of your feet and you mail them in so they have full tracings, you know, measurements and tracings of your, your foot size and shape so they can find a last that really works. And if, mm -hmm. if need be, they can customize that last right. um, to really fit your unique, you know, shape foot. Um, but because there just wasn't room with these vamps to stretch them further, mm -hmm. we had to replace the vamps. Um, the, the original vamp. The original vamps, which yeah. was this olive uh, Horween CXL horse strip right. from Brian. And I wanted to go with maybe a little bit of a contrast. Uh, I didn't have any pull-on rough-out boots, um, so I went with the uh, Horween. Same leather, honestly, the CXL. Um, horse hide but we just turned it inside out got mm -hmm. the rough out on the outside yeah it's a pretty subtle contrast because it is kind of an olive tone yeah um no i think it was a nice choice yeah so it's just a, just enough of a contrast uh grant talked me into the like beige stitching which is really cool kind of has that like boondocker look to it with the rough out yeah. and, the, and the kind of beige stitching um and then so you know they get rebuilt fully new counters i went mm -hmm. with the soft toe um, it's on the, their last, the PBD last is a really cool, really cool toe shape. Yeah. Um, really like tight sculpted waist. I mean, they, they, that's a lot of time spent on the sanding drum to, to sculpt that, to get that looking sure, that nice. Yeah. Um, new welts. It's a, it's a 360 welt, but it's only stitched 270. So you can get that shelf nice and tight you don't right. have a, you don't have a bunch of you know shelf sticking out past your heel mm -hmm. um new footbeds this has a really thin leather midsole and then the the really divisive part well part of the divisive part <laughs> is the the wedge sole the christie wedge right um kind of a wesco thing wedge wedge soles on engineers mm -hmm. you know i think the dude from black bear brand really kind of has made that like a thing and some people hate it a lot of people hate it some people like it mm -hmm. i like it i want to try it out 
Um, well, it's comfortable and it's, it's, it's extremely light. Yeah, it's casual and uh, it's just, it's, yeah, it's nice. Um, well, I have to say that was a very audacious move of you. Yes. Uh, for, and and I, <laughs> I was a little dubious yeah. to begin with when you told me what you were going to do. Uh, but man, it's a beautiful boot, It's but it's also very unique mm -hmm. in a way. Like I, I don't, I can't think of any brand specific one-off that, that uh, looks anything like it really. Absolutely, yeah. The the last shape does a lot to really change kind of the whole overall style of the boot. Um, and then, of course, as you can tell, one of the things you had mentioned is the you asked if they had shortened the shafts, and I think just because of the 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 new length, getting right. closer to my like eleven um, size eleven foot, mm -hmm. it's the proportions. The shaft does look a little shorter, but this is still the. The, yeah, the the size that came from Brian, so yeah. it hasn't been shortened. I see what you mean in relationship to the longer right foot bed. Yep, yep. Uh, and so I'm not sure if Brian would have made these to this size in the, in the beginning had this when yeah. this shaft appeared. You know, maybe yeah. another half inch. Well, higher. I mean, looking at it close up too, it really is kind of a Frankenstein. Absolutely. You see the roll club, but then you look at the the <laughs> lower. It's not roll boot, club. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, that is not a roll club boot. No. No, and then uh, of course the the elephant in the room. Uh, oh yeah, I chopped the straps off yeah. myself. Grant did not do that. Right. We discussed it originally. That was my plan to yeah. send them. I'd actually emailed Brian about this too. I had talked to Brian about uh, before he reached out to Unsung about relasting, right? And uh, and getting rid of the strap the straps. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, we can totally do that. You're just gonna have holes. You know where the where the stitching was. Mm -hmm. um, we could totally do that though, and ultimately I ended up going with unsung because I just felt that that 1940 last from Brian just didn't fit my foot well. Even mm -hmm. even if it was going to be the mm -hmm. right size, interesting. I just don't feel like it was a good fit for my for my foot, and I didn't know that these would be such a good fit for me, but I wanted to give it a shot. Yeah. It turns out, I uh, they are a good fit for me, right? But the straps, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what, what it is, Paul. I've just kind of grown to to not like the to have to fuss with that strap. Mm. And I just wanted something really a little yeah. more Western, just a roper, yeah. pull on well, looking boot. Yeah, you're definitely uh, heading in that direction. I could see yeah. just from the boots you've been buying and yep. wearing the last you know year or so. Mm -hmm. From day one, that little center bar of that buckle would pop off. Like if I didn't hit that hole, if it hit right. the strap, yeah. it would just shoot off. And I had to pull the boot off, slip it back on there, collapse it. It's just, I mean, it's just a little pinch. It's not right. mechanically fastened to that center bar and that buckle. Yeah. And pinch that, pinch it close so it was tight, oh, and then man. make sure I'm guiding it into that hole so I don't push it off. It was so annoying. Oh, and so yeah, that yeah. happened to me putting these on one day, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, off <laughs> off with their head, man. They're coming off. So, oh man, I, I did it clean. I, I retained yeah. the stitching, and it really doesn't bother me because the the way yeah. the way my pants fall, you don't even see this part. Well, to be honest with you, those cut off stubs lends to a, a very nice aesthetic. I I have to say, it, it's it like I said, it's sort of a Frankenstein. Yeah, but it's sort of a, a cool little detail mm -hmm. to have that little swatch of leather on the side. Yeah, just kind of sit there. Yeah, um, I kind of like it actually. I've I've grown fond of it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean sure. obviously if you were gonna have these <laughs> boots built from scratch, it wouldn't be there. You wouldn't even have the top buckle. No, probably not. You know, probably it would just not. be like a, a roper boot. Just a roper boot, yeah. You know? But I don't mind the top buckle though, because it doesn't get in the way. Right. You know, it doesn't get caught on anything. Yeah. And yeah. and if I want to really collapse that that in, like it, you're able to get yeah the shaft tighter after they're on than you could. I mean, frankly, I I never even use my my top. No, nah, you kind of set it and forget it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, it's I, set I, and it's, that's it. Right. Yeah. yeah. I know I'm gonna get some hate in the comments. Go ahead, flame me for <laughs> just destroying these roll club boots. Well, but uh, oh, I'm I'm happy with my decision, and and I think oh yeah, uh, these are I mean they're they're gorgeous, yeah, they're beautiful boots, thanks, Dave. custom boots, hand handmade custom boots from an amalgamation of two 
shops. Yeah. Uh, Roll Club in Southern California. Yeah. And Unsung, who did most of the rebuild work in yeah. Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville's like the new LA now. It's the it's the it's the, it's the it place, man. Yeah. 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 The the only thing retained from the Roll Club boots is the shaft. So all the all the original yeah. olive leather. That's the you know, everything else. Cool. All the way down is all Grant, and uh, th they're awesome guys. Hit that. Hit them up. Um, yeah. They just did a new release with Standard and Strange. They got their their slog boot, and they did their uh, Jim Casey roper. It's like a natural rough out, mm -hmm. a true roper with little pull tabs. Yeah. Um, really cool stuff, guys. They do cobbler repairs I mean, from the simplest stuff to obviously yeah. full rebuilds. If you need, if you have stuff that you want rebuilt, totally, totally affordable and a really quick turnaround time. The way they do it, they have like a, you set an appointment. Mm -hmm. And you have a, a date that you're supposed to send your boots in. Mm -hmm. So you just hold on to your boots. You're not sending them out and they're just hanging out there for months. Right. You know when you're going to send them in and you send them in, they receive the boots and they start working on your boots yeah. right then. So cool. it's, it's a pretty quick turnaround. Uh, it's a win-win. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. I think so, man. I've been wearing them quite a bit, man. You can see the the creases as much as you can see the creases in, uh, in rough out and, you know, wearing these wedge soles down. And yeah, I love them. Keepers now, it back in the rotation. I'm happy about that. <laughs> right on. Another episode of the Man Cave Club. And Jimmy, thanks for stopping by and bringing your modified roll club boots here. Yeah, thank you, man. Uh, please uh, don't be too harsh on me in the comments. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, we appreciate you guys watching. Check, uh, check the bio for, for links uh, and uh, subscribe, like, share this video. It helps, helps grow the channel. We're trying to trying to grow this thing. So any, any help is much appreciated, right? Definitely. Again, thanks guys. Jimmy and Paul talking about it all inside the Man Cave Club. It's the Man Cave Club.